Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be discussing Ten Count by Rahito Takarai. Before we get started, there will be spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiling this manga, go ahead and click off now. No worries, I'll catch you next time. For those of you left behind, let's go over some content warnings. There may be references to sexual assault, obsessive compulsive disorder, germophobia, unhealthy dom and sub dynamics, suicide, child neglect, praise kinks, dubcon, statutory rape, and inappropriate relationships between minors and adults as these things do appear in the manga. But if that's all good with you, let's go ahead and get started. As always, let's start with synopsis. Shiratani suffers from obsessive compulsive disorder. He spends every day in fear of being contaminated. The only way he can make it through his day-to-day -day life is by covering himself completely and avoiding as much human contact as possible. As a result, Shiratani is always in long sleeves and long pants along with a set of gloves to protect his hands. Even with all of the protection though, the moment he enters his home, he must strip completely and put the contaminated clothes away. Then he has to wash his hands as many times as possible until they're chapped and bleeding. This is Shirotani's routine. At least it was, until the day his boss narrowly avoided being hit by a car. While parked on the side of the road, the company president received a phone call, which he took just outside the car. While on the phone, he failed to notice a car heading his way. Shiratani, seeing the oncoming vehicle, calls out to the president and reaches out to him. But at the very last second, his aversion to human touch stops him. Thankfully though, a passerby on a bicycle saves the president. As it turns out, the savior is Kurose, a counselor at a psychiatric clinic, and the moment he sees Shiratani's gloves, he identifies that Shiratani has germophobia. Ashamed by his inability to save the president and from Kurose's urging, Shiratani begins seeking help from Kurose. First, Kurose has Shiratani write down 10 things he can't do due to his obsessive compulsive disorder. One being the easiest to achieve, 10 being near impossible. Then, together, Kurose and Shiratani go through each one and try to overcome them with exposure therapy. However, the line between counselor and patient begins to blur, and soon Shiratani is doing things with Kurose that disgust him, yet he craves it. Does Kurose truly see Shiratani as a patient needing treatment, or is there something more? And if there is more, can Shiratani overcome enough of his aversions to let Kurose in? This, thankfully, art-wise, lives up to the cover art. I sometimes find that the cover art depicts the very best version of the art, while the art through the series actually doesn't hold up or suffers from what I like to call, quote, manga blur, which is where, because the color palette is exclusively black, white, and gray tones, as manga typically is, all of the lines blend together and it's near impossible to distinguish what you're looking at. Based on the manga covers, which are all gorgeous, I was expecting some pretty clean artwork, and you'll find that the artwork in the content itself is just as clean, and I really enjoyed the art in this. It's very pretty to look at while also being very polished, I don't think you'll be disappointed there at all. I must admit this tickled a very depraved itch of mine. Something about dirtying something or someone that's clean just does it for me. And that's the main draw of the smut in this. Kurose wants to contaminate Shiratani, which sets up this interesting dom-sub dynamic between them. We also get a little praise kink in there, which is a nice addition. However, it is worth noting that Shiratani's consent to all of this is questionable as there aren't any established rules or safe words, as there typically would be for healthy BDSM play. Kurose takes advantage of Shiratani's trust, even to the point of outright lying when he says the therapy can cure him when, in reality, there really isn't a cure for these disorders. Based on what Kurose says, that is. I'm not an expert on any of these illnesses or disorders, so I can neither confirm nor deny the validity of any of the methods, treatments, or descriptions in this series. What I found super interesting, though, is that it spins Shiratani's fear of germs and contamination on its head. He isn't just afraid of getting himself and his home contaminated, but he's equally terrified of getting close to others and inadvertently contaminating them. Germophobia is often characterized as a way for the person with it to protect themselves. However, in this case, it's used to protect others. Sure, Tani sees himself as dirty just as much as he sees the world around him as dirty. So there are a lot of times when he's with Kurose that he's begging Kurose not to touch him, not because he's worried Kurose will infect him, but instead that he will infect Kurose, whether it be with germs or with his dirty thoughts. It's a fascinating side of this I haven't seen before. It was refreshing to see this new angle and really made Sure, Tani that much more endearing. Now, I do feel the backstory for Kurose is a little half-hearted. I wish it had been fleshed out a bit more to give it more depth. 
When you compare Kurosai's background to Shirotani's, the amount of effort that went into one versus the other is pretty clear, but it ultimately led to a very heart-rending confession. He initially was attracted to Shirotani because he reminded Kurosai of the recluse he couldn't save as a child, but in the end, he found they were completely different. But that was why Kurosai fell so deeply in love with him. I'm a sucker for those confessions like, yeah, you aren't X, Y, or Z, but that's why I love you. With all that being said, I love this. I'm not even going to try and pretend that I don't. It's smutty and dark, and I love every bit of it. With the focus of the work being taking advantage of someone using their mental illness, though, I can't recommend it to everyone. It really is pretty, though, and has some of the sexy scenes in all of BL manga, in my humble opinion, that is. If the content warnings aren't a problem, this is worth a go for sure. So, have you read 10 Count? If so, what do you think? Do you agree with my assessment? Do you not? Let me know and comment below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Bye! Bye!